Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss about a topic called diversion head work. So a diversion head work diverts the water in a river to increase its height and to supply it to other areas for different purposes. In this case, let us look at a diversion head work called the Bor Dekodai Head Works, which is located near the place called Sizusa, near the Arunachal border. Let's look at the components. This is a barrier across the river. As you can see, this is the river and this is a small barrier. It raises the water level and as the water level rises, it can be diverted across the banks to a canal. So this is a canal. So through this canal, water is supplied to the nearby agricultural fields. So you see, this canal is coming like this. And from this, different branches are shooting off to the irrigation fields, the agricultural fields. Now, if we look at the whole project, this is the main weir or it's basically a barrier which raises the water level and this is called a divide wall. This is another divide wall. The divide wall serves one purpose that is it prevents the formation of secondary current. Secondary current is when water flows in the other directions than the straight direction of the axis of the river. So that means some eddy currents are produced. To stop these eddy currents, we divide this weir into, this portion of the weir into one or two parts. So what happens is those secondary currents cannot form because of this barrier, this wall, and near the place from where we are going to extract the water from the river, those kind of eddies are not formed. So here we have a relatively calm pocket of water. Now let's look at the other components. You see here this cross section is very well defined unlike the river cross section in all these other places. So that is done by constructing a kind of an embankment here. So this is the embankment where the upstream end of the embankment is made a curve like this. What should be the actual specification of this embankment will depend on the discharge, the river width and lots of other factors. So in other, this side also we can provide the same kind of embankment which will prevent the erosion of the river. That means from this point up to some point in the downstream, we need the cross section of the river to be stable. Now, this place, as you can see, here we have all the gates. Those gates, when opened, will let water from the river to enter this canal and when closed the canal will remain dry. Now let's look at a clearer picture here. So this here is the river and this is the guide bank or the embankment that is pr provided to protect the bank. And this is the weir, this is the divide wall, this is the canal headwork, and this is the canal from which to which water is supplied. There is another embankment which is called a marginal embankment. It can be provided on one side or both sides depending on the topography of the area. In this place, it's not clear whether those uh, that embankment is provided or not. That embankment is provided for a very long distance actually because this embankment which is provided here to protect the bank from erosion is expensive and it's 
constructed with rocks and boulders but a longer embankment can be provided up to a larger length along the river up to the upstream so that when because of this embankment and this uh, weir the water level is raised permanently and therefore if flood comes the flood level will also rise therefore to protect the nearby area we provide an embankment along the river bank to a certain length how much length is required that will depend on the topography if the river banks are already very high then that embankment may not be necessary so this is that embankment here now if we zoom in then we'll see this kind of a structure that is um, this is the weir or barrage this is the off-taking canal this is called under sluices these under sluices are some extra gates right in front of these other gates these gates will allow water to enter the off-taking canal but here also there are some gates those gates when open will allow the river water to flow downstream so these gates are opened by some amount so that some water always reaches the downstream because the downstream cannot be allowed to go dry now this portion which is just in front of this off-taking canal is called the approach channel or pocket here the water is generally steady and calm because no secondary current is allowed to form because we have provided this divide wall here and in this in this divide wall itself we can provide something called a fish ladder we'll see how this fish ladder works later okay. and this is a structure which is called silt excluder this is provided so that the silt is trapped inside this and it cannot enter the off-taking canal because this is a canal which is used for irrigation purpose and if silt enters this canal then after some time silt will be deposited in the canal and its bed will be raised and its capacity will be decreased. Now let us look at this structure from a 3D perspective. So this is the structure from the top view. These are the embankments, the guide banks or guide buns. These, this one and this one, they are the marginal embankments which will be provided for a very long length to the upstream so that it is the upstream. That means this area and this area are protected from the raised water level. Now, this is the off-taking canal. This is the weir and this part is just a road or a bridge over the whole structure so that some transportation is possible. Now the scale of this whole project may not be very accurate. Just to give you an idea, this is a figure of a person. So you can guess how big something can be. Now, this is the embankment that is provided and it is provided with a curved head and the downstream end is also provided with some curve. So water comes in from this direction and here it is stored and the level is raised because of this weir and this divide wall makes sure that in this portion the water is not having lots of secondary currents or eddies. 
now this is called this portion is called a fish ladder it's a long channel connecting the upstream and downstream of the uh, weir and it is provided with these kind of small walls projecting from both sides of the canal what happens is water when flowing through this will have to take a very zigzag path like this and therefore its velocity will be reduced when its velocity is reduced fish from the downstream can possibly swim upstream because now those fish have to overcome only a small velocity of water otherwise it is very difficult for them to swim upstream and cross this barrier now the off taking canal is fed by these kind of work which is called a head regulator so a head regulator is provided with these kind of gates so these are the gates mostly these are made of metal and they are raised or lowered based on need so here i have only shown this kind of a, uh, steering or screw thread arrangement if you rotate this it will be either lowered or raised but in most cases instead of this kind of an arrangement some machine arrangement is provided where a motor electric motor generally rotates a spindle and that spindle raises or lowers the gate now this is something called this part these tunnels are called silt excluders what they do is when water flows to this location the silt carried by the water will be mostly carried near the lower part of the flow so that part enters this portion these tunnels if you see those tunnels lead uh, lead to the downstream these are some more gates here 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 each of those gates are supposed uh, open by a different amount now in this part all the silts that are carried by the water will be stored and trapped so that water entering through these openings will be relatively clear and therefore in this canal we get some cleaner water so this canal will go a long way based on the command area now there is something else called an undersluice gate so these undersluices are again gates so these gates are opened or closed so these are the gates these are opened or closed based on need so that water from the upstream can be released to the downstream generally they are not closed together to the complete extent only a few of the goat gates are closed or they are partially uh, opened so that a controlled amount of water is released to the downstream so this is what a diversion head work looks like i'll share this file with you and this is uh, prepared using a software called sketchup this is sketchup make 2017 it's a free software where you can draw some kind of 3d diagrams it may be useful for you also it's very simple and easy to use actually there is a pro version which is i guess uh, you have to pay for that where instead of uh, surface diagrams here you see all these solid 
although they appear to be solid they are not actually solids they are just made of surfaces so their insides are hollow now in sketchup pro you can use uh, draw proper solid uh, diagrams but for most of the purposes that we need this sketchup make the free version is sufficient i guess one more thing you see i've made from here to here there is a floor so this is called the wear floor now that means this portion and this portion is not just a river bed there is a concrete or impervious floor concrete or masonry floor which is provided from here up to here this is provided so that water doesn't enter the river bed very close to the uh, weir and doesn't get released just at the downstream because in that case it will be a very small seepage length and lots of seepage will occur so it will not be able to store the water so what we have done is we have provided some impervious floor so that water cannot enter in this portion water has to enter here in this location and it has to flow through flow under the ground under the floor and through this it can release at this portion to the downstream that means we have increased the flow path to further increase the length of the flow path what we can do is we can provide some sheet piles here Let's provide this sheet pile here. The sheet pile will not have this kind of thickness, but here in the drawing I'll just to show you I'm giving it some thickness so this will be an underground wall or sheet so that when water enters here it cannot directly flow horizontally it has to go down a little bit then again come up then also then only it can flow horizontally a similar sheet pile can be provided at the downstream end also actually it must be provided in the downstream that we are going to learn um, after some classes so here also we are providing another sheet pile so these are called cutoff walls so now you can see water has to enter like this then it will go like this then it will flow horizontally then again it will come back like this and it will be released at the end of this impervious floor here so we have vastly increased the length of travel of this seepage water that means its velocity will be reduced reduced and therefore the rate of seepage will also be reduced so this is how we can understand the different components of this diversion head work so that's all for this one If you have free time, you can install this SketchUp software and try your own uh, drawings. Okay, thank you.